What is up, ladies and Ugalos? I am your host, Drugalo. And today, you may notice this isn't a uh, gameplay video or Pokemon or anything. Uh, I'm going. I'm going to still be doing gameplay videos, of course. But I'm thinking, you know, I watch a lot of TV shows, you know, anime, uh, superhero shows, you know, uh, Flash, Arrow, etc. So it'd be good if I, you know, talk about it here because I always want to talk about it with someone, but. You know, there's not always people around that watch it, or they're not caught up, or something like that. So, I figured I'd share it with you guys. And then you can leave in your comments below what you think, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, if there's, you know, just something you want to add. And I feel it's easy, because I can mostly just, you know, I could just talk, because uh, if you if you meet me in real life, you'll know uh, I'm, I've been known to be kind of a talker. I like to talk a lot. I like to explain things, I like to, you know, I can rant easily, so, and these shows sometimes, uh, they just make me want to rant, so, uh, without further ado, uh, let's get into it, this is the season finale of The Legends of Tomorrow, uh, Aruba, and uh, first, there's there was some criticisms about this episode, I'm going to get that in the end, this can be more like a review slash what I liked about it first. And sometime throughout that, primarily towards the end, I may get into a rant as I get excited about uh, what's going on. But, you know, we'll get through it. Uh, and like I said, in the comments below, you guys can tell me, you know, if I'm totally off base in your opinion. Or if, you know, I'm right on the money. So let's go. Uh, first, first off, I like how when this episode opened, instead of doing like their normal previously on... Legends of Tomorrow, or something like that, they, it almost seemed like a commercial, because at first I was like, is this the episode, or is this still a commercial, it seemed like an ad, but it was, uh, it was part of the episode, and I think that was done really well, like, they recapped a large part of, a large portion of the season through almost like an advertisement, and that served as the, you know, previously on portion of the episode, so I thought that was really good. So let's get into the uh, meat of the episode. The number one rule of time travel. Don't interact with your own timeline. All time travels. This is a common time travel trope. Everything. Doctor Who, etc. You don't go back and mess with your own timeline. But, gotta understand their situation. Uh, we're in a Doom world now. The Legion, uh, the Legion of Doom got the Spear of Destiny. And they have all the power in the universe to create anything to do whatever they want to do so they're at a pretty tough predicament so I can understand them saying you know we just gotta do what we gotta do yeah we might mess up time but you know really they could just use the spear to fix time regardless but we're not gonna get into that we'll, we'll get into that later we'll get into that later so yeah they felt we gotta do what we gotta do yeah we'll create a paradox but maybe we can get away with it and protag our way out of this which is reasonable. So, um, but there's the cost that when, if they destroy the spear, you know, they want to go back to 1916 and get the blood of Christ and then put it on the spear and then destroy the spear. But if they do that, their current version of themselves will no longer exist. They basically, uh, up, upon taking this mission, are turning themselves into aberrations. So this crew we're watching now will no longer be the main crew going forward. Like, it's still them in their timeline, but this will now be an erased timeline. So the crew that was on that mission at 1916 will now become the true them, so to speak. So uh, I do like that sense of sacrifice. It's like, some it, it's easy for people to get away with stuff all the time. Like, we're going to do whatever we want, mess with time, whatever we want, you know, shoot go back to the middle ages and shoot fire and lasers everywhere but now there's like actual consequences in order to save the world we have to sacrifice ourselves and at the same time not sacrificing ourselves so I, I, feel, I feel like that was a good touch uh, Mick just says a uh, classic Mick he just says let's go to Aruba why erase ourselves when we could just not but of course they don't listen like they're still not there yet with Mick you know they're not trying to hear that right now so uh yeah then 
uh, they go, you know they go out there they start their mission, but Eobard Thawne is not going to just let them waltz right right in. He already knows what they're up to. He knew they'd come back to 19, six, 1916. And he actually well first he breaks the uh he breaks the vial that contains Jesus' blood and literally has Jesus' blood on his hands. But then not only that, he keeps going and he rips a uh, Ray's heart right out of his chest. Like literally just vibrates into his chest cavity, takes and removes his heart, and then Ray just falls to the ground dead. It's like R.I.P. Ray. Um then now, you know, that's just even more reason they have to use the spear. Because they can't just let this reality go. Mick brings up a good point, like we're all just aberrations anyway, so basically we could just kill all ourselves off and it doesn't matter because we're not the real versions anyway anymore. We're just the ones that gotta be get gotten rid of, so uh that makes sense, but still it, we're upping the we're upping the anxiety of the show we're upping the uh we gotta fix this now too much damage has been done, and we already lost a Maya in the previous episode, so uh yeah, but so the crew this crew now is starting to get even more suspicious you know of our doom world versions like they're starting to know something ain't right like just how they're acting you know suspicious i thought you just left oh but i had to go you know use the bathroom type things like their excuses aren't matching up too well and then uh nate over here just seeing amaya again alive he's just he's so awestruck he just starts babbling like an idiot and you know acting like he's seen a ghost as they say which kind of he is from his perspective but uh that makes him late getting the spear and he runs out of time uh they all run out of time because the current you know the ones that were already there versions of themselves are on their way back to the wave rider so they got to stall or else they're going to get trapped there and eventually uh, the old crew anyway catches on that something's not right and a brawl ensues uh, they're like these are imposters get them out of here they're fakes and they held nothing back like Ray was punching Sarah in the face and uh, even uh, Citizen Steel he just steeled up and punched him punched Sarah right in the face like they did not care like they thought they were fake I guess the Legion in the skies, I assume, so it's okay to punch. Now, Sarah's probably the best fighter among all of them in just raw fighting ability. Yeah, she was League of Assassins trained, but, I don't know. Call me old-fashioned, but it still it still looks a little off of them just punching her in the face like that. But, I digress. Uh, let's see, uh, the spear. Oh, I like the quote. She said, uh, Oh yeah, they realized they were real, right, eventually. But And when the two Sarahs were talking to each other, like they eventually... Uh, th so, after they realize they're real, everybody's just like... It's this part where they just get like cool with it, with it, like they've seen each other. It really happened when Rip saw the other Rip. And that's when it's like, okay, and then you had a time quake. But then they're just like, well, we've already messed stuff up, might as well just talk to ourselves, give some little sagely advice from the future. You've already messed up time, so let's just keep tearing that hole. But, you know, the two Sarahs are talking and our Sarah tells this Sarah the spear is a weapon and you know what we do with weapons. I thought that was a good quote. That's why she's afraid to use the spear because she doesn't trust herself. She knows how she is with weapons. She knows there's darkness inside of her, and she doesn't want to have literally all the be all powerful. She can make reality anything she wants it to be, and because there's darkness inside of her, she doesn't trust herself to do the right thing with it. I just thought they worded it nicely because she is a master with weapons, or using them to kill though and destroy. Uh, but then they try to time jump, and they get a time storm, because, you know, they're being very, very bad with time right now. 
Uh, you know, they when Rip commented on that, like he didn't think this was gonna work, and th they've been doing Rip really dirty this whole season. Like, I don't know where you guys all side on the Captain Sarah Lance versus Captain Rip Hunter. Like, now that they're both back, who should be captain? Should Sarah still be captain? Should she have given the captain's chair back to Rip? Now, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But me personally, I am always a fan of Rip being captain. One, that is his ship. Like, yeah, he was gone. He was, he was gone. And, you know, Sarah became captain. And she, you know, f grew into the role. Like, she learned how to do it. But that doesn't mean all of a sudden Rip's no longer a qualified captain. Like, Rip made that team. That was his ship. Like, everything about this was Rip's. Rip was in charge. The whole Rip's whole purpose there, he even mentioned it. Rip's whole purpose there was to be captain. Like, Sarah had a purpose outside of being captain. Rip's only purpose was being captain. And, like, sure, he could just kick it along with the crew, but... Really, he's not doing much but giving the occasional tip, which they may or may not listen to. And, you know, just just being there, helping out where he can. So, I, I don't know. I don't like how they treat her. I wish they would have just made him, like, the strong leader captain they need to keep push the crew forward. Like, yeah, Sarah's done a fine job, and that's all well and good. But that doesn't mean you can't have two qualified people on the ship. It just means one's captain and one isn't. And Sarah even acted like she may let him step down because she was she was so happy to see him back. She called him Captain Rip Hunter, the captain of the Wave Rider, and then just you know, oh that didn't mean I was gonna give you your seat back. <laughs> you thought, but you know, uh, it is what it is. The writers did what they wanted to do. I disagree, but. I guess it's easy to backseat drive. But that's what this is for. Us giving our opinions and our reviews and you guys uh, commenting down below if you agree with me. Or if you disagree with me. So, uh, like I said, they were trying to time jump and they created a time storm and rip warned them, but uh, it happened anyway. So, now they decide to go out. They're going to go fight. It's an army of themselves, you know, duplicates versus the Legion. Uh, this was a pretty cool looking fight scene. I, I kind of enjoyed this. I liked how it looked. Um, more members continue to die. They just, this is when they really start just killing off people. But uh, fortunately for them, it's all the disposable ones that are basically aberrations now. So convenient. They're killing the right ones. Uh, yeah, including Snart killing his partner, Mick. Like, Mick. Mick would never have killed Leonard Snart. I Mick is a loyal friend to Leonard, but I don't really think Snart was ever Mick's friend. Like, yeah, I don't think ever, Leonard Snart ever considered Mick a friend for like maybe he did. I think he did. I'll I'll say this before Snart before he became a legend. I think he considered him a partner and a useful tool and you know there might have been some level of friendship but nowhere near higher than Leonard's need to be tough and not soft and not weak he said that multiple times in the episode like you've gone soft you've gone weak I'm not going soft I'm not going weak like things like that so uh, you know I guess when it came down to it he would stab Mick in the back uh, because he went soft or uh, to protect the Legion to protect Damien Dark you know I was a little surprised by that but you know killed Mick so now another scene where Nate is laying there dying and Amaya it's like she's helping them, him she's comforting him as he dies but then as soon as she realizes it's not her Nate she just drops him and he goes over to the, the real Nate, you know, but yeah, I guess that's not that that bad because he was dying, and I guess just alright, well, let him lay down let him, you know die in peace, but I'm sure he would have wanted to like I don't think he was dead when she lowered him down I think he was just 
about to die. So she kind of just like, oh, well, okay, I got the real one, so bye. But, you know, that's a little nitpicking, I guess. Uh, then the reverse uh, flash comes. You know, this time he brings an army. You know, uh, he he's not playing around this time. He said, "You guys, yeah, the rules are just out the window." You know, the team has duplicates of themselves. Paradox, paradox is all happening. So he's like, "Well, if they get to cheat, they get to break the rules. I get to cheat. I get to break the rules." So he went back and brought like fifty versions, like fifty of himself, and they just start killing everybody. You know, going after the person without the spear. But, you know, killing everybody. So this is it. Uh, Amaya tells her, use a spear. There's nothing else they can do. They can't beat 50 Eddie Thons. Like, they can't beat 50 Reverse Flashes. Your whole team is dead for this, Sarah. You know, uh, the rest of the people are going to die soon. It's like, you have to use the spear. Uh, and but Sarah's afraid of her own darkness. She tries to pass it off to Amaya, but that's no longer an option. Uh, Rip encourages her, you know, tells her she's stronger than she thinks. Uh, but it still comes down to her, so she has to do it, and she does. And she sees Laurel in a vision. And Laura, Laurel tells her she can make reality as she sees fit. But okay. This is part that made me the most upset about this episode. Hey, this is where I'm going to rant a little bit. You have all of the power in the universe. Right? Like, yeah, I get everything that's happened in your life led you up to this. So you don't want to change, you know, too much of it. But Sarah proved by that by... You know, she only made a couple of small changes in reality when she used the spear. So she proved she has the willpower to limit how much she uses the spear. Yet for some reason, for some reason, she wouldn't use it. Like, respond. Like, I'm sorry. They're saying they need someone to do the right thing, even if it means not having Laurel back. Like, what is the right thing? You are making the right thing. You control all of reality, all of existence. It's not wrong to bring Laurel back. I don't understand. Is it because it's using the spear for selfish purposes? It's not selfish pur purpose. You're literally being selfless and bringing Laurel back to life. You're just rewriting it so she never died. She still could have got stabbed. See, that's the thing. They're acting like it's all or nothing. They're acting like you have to change everything that ever happened. Like you never got on the Queen's Gambit. Like Oliver was never a cheater. Oliver never went on the Queen's Gambit. Never become the Green Arrow. You know, you're, you're acting like all this had to happen. You never be joined the League of Assassins. You don't have to take your whole life back. You don't have to change your entire life. You don't have to rewrite everything. You can responsibly pick and choose. You could say, okay, Damien Dark did stab Laurel. Or whatever whatever it was he did. Damien Dark did attack Laurel. But it didn't kill her. Like, she went to the hospital and she recovered. Like, you could say that. You could say, Oliver, you know gets to spend time with his kid. Oliver's son is in his life. You know, you could say something like that. You can control reality and remove any consequences from doing so. There are no consequences. This is what exists. Like you're not time you're not going back in time and changing time to suit your own desires and then you're creating paradoxes and all this. No. You're changing reality. It, it's basically a blanket statement. You can do whatever you want and no consequence. That's what the Legion did. They created a whole doom world reality where evil reigns and the heroes are their pawns. It's like, there was no consequences for them. There was no 
time wraiths or paradoxes happening to them, the world was perfectly fine because, you know, reality was perfectly fine because they control reality. And it would not have been bad. It would not have been the wrong thing to do. It would not have been selfish at all. 100%, I believe it would not have been bad for Sarah to bring Laurel back. I'm sorry. Like, if if you guys disagree, please tell me and please explain to me how. Like, yeah, you gotta be selfless. You can't use the spear to suit what you want. Why not? It's not like you're saying, I want to be a billionaire and let everyone else be homeless. Like, you're not saying, I want to, you know, dominate the globe and everyone has to be my servants. You're not saying, I want to bring back slavery. You're not saying anything outrageous. You're saying, make it so my sister didn't die. And, you know, some other things. Like, if your sister didn't die, maybe Quentin Lance wouldn't have gone into a spiraling drunken depression. Like, just let Oliver see his kid. Too. Like, Oliver's pretty messed up. And it's dangerous to change something in Oliver's life because then you affect who the Green Arrow came out to be. But saving Laurel, you would just get the Black Canary back. And yeah, that may affect um, Dinah, the new Black Canary, because now they wouldn't have gone out looking for another Black Canary. But you can fix that too. Just change reality so that, you know, they just have two shriekers on the team you can do whatever you want like literally you have all the power there is in the universe throughout all of time everything that ever has happened everything that ever ha is happening all that ever could be you control in the palm of your hands you could change the laws of physics you know allow superpower super well i guess it already is a reality where superpowers exist but you know what I'm saying. Like, she could do whatever she wants. But she doesn't have to do all that. She doesn't have to change everything so much. Just save your sister. And for her to be like, I'm okay with, you know, I'm going to do the right thing. Even if it means not saving you. And, and then I'm at peace not saving my sister. Laurel's at peace with it. Screw that. Save her. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing bad will happen. Makes me mad, man. Makes me mad. You don't... Ha it's not an all or nothing thing. Just like she used the spear to... Uh, to depower itself. And I guess bring Black Flash there. Just like she did that. She could save her sister. I don't understand. She has the willpower to limit it. But anyway... As I said, she used it to depower the spear, and then Black Flash came. And, uh, yeah, it gets him. Uh, Thawne is gotten. Uh, he, he fades away, along with the whole army. Now, I've heard some people say, this isn't the end of Eddie Thawne. Uh, sorry, not Eddie Thawne. Uh, if I said Eddie Thawne, anytime I meant Eobard Thawne. But uh, people say this is the end of Eobard, or this isn't the end of Eobardthon, but I mean it should be. That's why Black Flash was chasing him. Eobardthon should not have existed because Eddie killed himself, so Eobard would never have been born. So this Eobard that's been running around here is a time aberration, running from the Black Flash is judgment, you know. And he finally caught up to him, and now he's gone. So the last ab so the aberration should be gone, unless there's another aberration version out there, which means maybe we'll see him again. But you know, I I could be missing some details, so that could be a possibility. But you know, I'm I'm gonna walk under the assumption that he's gone, but I'm open to hearing. If you guys know reasons uh, why he'd still be here, like I said, uh, comment down below. You know, yeah. But their mission is complete. And now Doom World Sarah, our Sarah, fades away saying, Remember, legends never die.
you know, striking a pose and fading away as she says her last words, uh, quoting the Goonies, you know. I, I gotta say, I kind of like that scene. Well, I do like it. That was a good scene. Um, you know. So, the team uh, walks away. You know. Uh, all their versions survived, so they're good. Um, so, they're going to go take the Legion all back. Uh, Snart is going back to 2014. And he wipes his memory to put him back on the right path, put him back on the path he was supposed to be. Basically start all this over. Uh, Sarah puts Damien Dark back, uh, even though he's going to kill Laurel, and even he's confused by that, especially when he says Laurel's okay with it too. Well, that's how you know, like, Damien Dark's like, why would you do this? Why wouldn't you save your sister? Like, if you kill me now, Laurel gets to live. But, She's got to do it this way for some reason. Now, someone tell me where they got these men in black neuralizers from. Please, please tell me. That's what they're called, right? The mind erasing things. Because if they could have just... If they had this technology that with a flash of light could wipe people's memories of all this that just happened. Why did they not do this before? I don't understand. Why didn't you wipe, you know, the Legion's mind five episodes ago? You know, six episodes ago, when you're looking for the spear, trying to find all the parts of the spear, just wipe their minds. Then they'll forget they're even looking for a spear. They'll forget they're a Legion of Doom. They'll forget they're in a partnership. They'll forget they're working together. Reverse Flash, make him forget he's an aberration and let the Black Flash catch up to him. You know, they could have saved all this time. I'm sorry, that's a major plot hole. Like, they could have saved all this time by just wiping their memories. Why is that not their primary weapon? Never a bad guy's doing something bad, just wipe his memory. Like, I can understand that might not work in all situations, but it worked perfectly well here. Why didn't you use that at the beginning? Like, oh, a Legion of Doom? A, a Legion of Doom? Boop! Not anymore. <sighs> hey, uh, back on the ship. Amaya wants to stay and not go to 1942. Uh, even though Nate offers to go with her. She just wants to stay here, you know, they kiss lovey-dovey. Uh, and Rip is leaving, saying, I have nothing more to teach you. You know, saying Sarah's been a great captain, like, better than he ever was, and he has nothing left to teach her. <sighs> Rip was never there to teach them. Like, he was never there to teach, to train a new captain. He was there to be captain. Just because, you know, they're fully grown, fully trained legends now, doesn't mean his job is done. Doesn't mean he doesn't have a right anymore to be on the ship. Now, if he just wants to take a break, you know, chill, go to Aruba. You know, and just relax. If he wants to do that, that's perfectly fine. But, you know, don't feel like you have to leave just because they're experienced now. And I can't even say Sarah's been a better captain than you have. Because Sarah's taken a lot of risk. Yeah, they still saved the day in the end. But Sarah's taken quite a lot of risks. And I, I can't say she's a better captain than you. I, that's my opinion. You guys can feel free to disagree. But I don't think she's been a better captain than Rip. So, for him to just be leaving. And he's going to take the jump ship. Is Gideon on the jump ship? I don't remember. Like, I doubt, especially after that kiss a few episodes back. Like, I don't think he'd just leave Gideon like that. So, I'm going to assume there's a copy of Gideon on the jump ship. Just gonna like travel through time, you know, chilling, go to all the hit vacation spots. He says it'll be easy staying out of trouble without you lot there, right? So, which is true. So now everyone's happy, happy they even let Mick plot a course. Uh, and of course, he goes for Aruba, but oh no, a time storm, it caught up to him. You know, Sarah not actually fixing things, but just doing the 
bare minimum it takes to have won the day. Yeah, there's still cons. She could have fixed time. She could have been like, oh, and make it so there's no paradoxes from us doing all this. Like she could have did that, but she didn't. And now there's a huge time storm. They're crash landing again, and they hit that building. Like that was hundreds of people, thousands of people in that building, and everybody just died. Hundreds of people just died in one crash. Like it was a cool scene, but you just killed hundreds of people. And they land in LA 2017, and they done goofed, and they don't have any spear to fix it. You got dinosaurs walking in the street. You got twisty built building in the background. You got Big Ben back there. It's like this is not how 2017 is supposed to be, and. Another question is, how will this affect Flash and Arrow? Maybe this is why they're going on. Uh, maybe this is why they went on break right now because they don't want to have to do an episode with Oliver in this weird reality. They don't want to have to do an episode with the Flash in this weird reality. They just want to, you know, le leave this in Legends. But they're all connected, right? They're in 2017. Uh, and I doubt L.A. is the only city in the world affected by their temporal shenanigans and reality-bending shenanigans, but, you know, we'll see when they uh, bring the shows back. So, all in all, don't get me wrong, I really like Legends of Tomorrow, and this season had some really good parts in it. I don't like some of the plot holes and this whole... I can't use the spear at all because I have to do the right thing. I agreed with Amaya. Use the spear. Just use it responsibly. Like, it's not all or nothing. You can use the spear to affect things in your life and make it for the better. Just don't ruin other people's lives when doing it. And don't do something that will affect... I guess will affect making you the person you are today unless you want to change the person you are today. But... Anyway, good episode. Great episode mo for the most part. Uh, I thank you guys for watching my video. This is a pretty long video, 32 minutes. Uh, I thank you guys for watching. If you have any recommended... I know these CW shows are going on uh, uh, the season finales right in the breaking. So I came in at the wrong time. I wanted to do this sooner, but I'm just getting around to it now. And I missed a few episodes. But uh, if you guys really want, I can go back and watch them and review them also. I've already watched them, but I can review them if you guys want. But if there's any other shows, you know, anime, uh, the new Boruto anime just came out. Uh, My Hero Academia Season 2 just came out. You know, if there's anything like that you guys want me to review, just uh, leave it in the comments below, and I'll uh, whip a video up for you guys, and we can talk about it. You can talk to me, I can talk to you, we'll have fun. Uh, I, I'm really going to like this series, because this is what, you know, I do talking to myself, you know go annoying people around me trying to talk and they don't really care so might as well put in a YouTube video I already have a channel you know we'll see see how many views this gets let's try to get this to at least 10 likes uh, please uh, like like it of course uh, share it with your friends and uh, if you are not subscribed already please subscribe and I thank you guys for watching once again this has been Jerugolo and I am signing off until the next episode Bye, guys.